In this tutorial on industrial simulation, we will talk about flow measurement part 8. The discourse content here are positive displacement flow meter, neutering disc, oscillating piston, rotating vein, loped impeller, oval gear, and reciprocating piston. In quantity flow meters, the flow rate is directly proportional to the rate of oscillation. The quantity flow meters are of two types, positive displacement flow meter and metering pump. Here we will talk about the positive displacement flow meter types. The positive displacement flow meters are those flow meters that measure the volume of fluid passing through the equipment directly. These are the only type of flow meters that directly measure the fluid volume as they pass through the meter. This direct measurement is done as fluid gets trapped in pockets of fixed known volumes between rotating components within the device as if a beaker is getting filled in and emptied repeatedly and the number of this repetition is being counted. The number of times that the bucket is filled and emptied is indicative of the flow through the meter. The rate at which the repetition occurs is directly proportional to the volumetric flow rate. As because they pass a known quantity, they are ideal for certain fluid batches, blending and custody transfer applications. They give very accurate information and are generally used for production and accounting purposes. This device is most often used for measuring flow of fuels, oils, tar chemicals and other super viscous fluids. Positive displacement flow meters are further subdivided into neutering disc, oscillating piston, rotating vein, loped impeller, oval gear, and reciprocating piston. The advantages of a positive displacement flow meter are the initial cost is very low. It is applicable for highly viscous fluids, fuel oil, tar, chemicals, paints, and super viscous fluids. However, the limitations of these flow meters are they have high maintenance cost, high pressure drop due to total obstruction in flow path is recorded, unsuited for low flow rates, they have low tolerance towards suspended particles more than 100 micrometer, and bubbles in fluid decrease the accuracy. The first type of positive displacement flow meter is the neutrating disc meter. Neutrating disc flow meter are very common positive displacement flow meters. They have a disc mounted on a central ball located in a spherical sidewall chamber. In presence of fluid, the disc neuters or wobbles and transfers the enclosed fluid volume. The pressure of the liquid passing through the measuring chamber causes the disc to rock in a circulating path without rotating about its own axis. It is only moving part in the measuring chamber. A pin extended perpendicularly from the disc is connected to a mechanical counter that monitors the disc rocking motion. Each cycle is proportional to a specific quantity of flow. As is true with all positive displacement flow meters, viscosity variations below a given threshold will affect the measuring accuracies. The advantages of the neutering disc meter are they have reasonable cost, they are applicable in liquid batch processes and filling plants, they have moderate pressure loss and the construction material range is wide. However, the limitations are the operation is only limited to pipe size and pipe capacity, they offer moderate accuracy and the accuracy depends on the viscosity, they are unsuitable for slurry elements. The second type of positive displacement flow meter is the oscillating piston. The oscillating piston flow meter uses a precision machined chamber containing a cylindrical piston that oscillates as liquid flows. The piston's central shaft is constrained to run in a circular groove in the chamber, resulting in an off-center rotating motion as the liquid sequentially enters and exits compartments machined into the underside of the piston. Since the compartment volume is known, accurate measurement is obtained by knowing the revolutions. It is similar to that of a neutering disc except 
that the measurement device is a split wing oscillating in only one plane. It comprises a slotted cylinder oscillating about a dividing bridge which separates the inlet and the outlet ports. Initially, the piston rests at the central position. As fluid enters the section, the ring starts rotating from left to right until the fluid is escorted to the outlet. The rotation of the piston is transmitted through a diaphragm to the gear train and is registered. This type is suitable for viscous and corrosive liquids and the accuracy offered is plus minus 1%. The advantages on offered by an oscillating piston are they have good accuracy at low flow rates, they have good repeatability, easy installation and moderate cost. The limitations are however small size, limited power capacity and fluid should be clean otherwise they don't operate properly. The third type in the category of positive displacement flow meter is the rotating vein meter. Here, spring-loaded veins slide in and out of a channel in a rotor so that they make constant contact with the eccentric cylindrical wall. When the rotor turns, a known volume of fluid is trapped between the two veins and the outer wall. The flow rate is based on volume per revolution. The piston type is suitable for accurately measuring small volumes and is not affected by viscosity. The limitation, however, this device is leakage and loss of pressure. The advantages of the rotating vein meter are they offer reasonable accuracy that is plus minus 0.1%. They have very high temperature tolerance up to 180 degrees Celsius. They have very high pressure tolerance up to 7 mega Pascal and they have wide range of operation that is up to 17,500 gallons per minute. The limitations are not suitable for slurry fluids and only for clean liquids they are applicable and they have very high initial cost. The next type of positive displacement flow meter is the loped impeller. This type of meter uses two loped impellers which are geared and meshed to rotate at opposite directions within the enclosure. Two rotating impellers with eight cross sections rotate in opposite directions due to the gas flowing through and the force being exerted by that. The impellers are such shaped that the gap between them remains constant without getting touched. A gear arrangement assures the synchronous movement of the impellers using adjustable fine tooth gear train arrangement and during each rotation four crescent shaped volumes are moving through the closed cavity. A known volume of fluid is transferred for each revolution and the volume is counted by knowing the revolution count. The advantages of the loped impeller are they have very high pressure tolerance up to 8 MPa, they have very high temperature tolerance up to 200 degrees Celsius, they offer excellent accuracy for gas flow about 0.1 to 0.05%. They have no separate inlet outlet section and no power is required for running this device. However, the disadvantages are poor accuracy at low flow rates. They have a bulky size, heavy sluggish under changes. They are expensive. They have moving parts and therefore suffer from wear and tear. They are only good for gas flow and they have the danger of overspeeding. The next type is the oval gear. Here two oval gears are cased intermixed in the cavity to trap fluid inside. The fluid flow rotates the gear arrangement with contactless sensors picking up the motion. The device gives high resolution as each tooth individually generates a pulse. The oval gears rotate due to the pressure from the fluid and a count of revolution determines the volume of fluid moving through the device. The viscosity of the fluid can affect the leakage or the slip flow. If the meter is calibrated on a particular fluid, it will read marginally higher should the viscosity rises. Newer designs of this type of meter use servo motors to drive the gear. This eliminates the pressure drop across the meter and also the force required to drive the gear is normalized. 
This eliminates the force which causes the slip flow. This mainly applies to smaller size meters and significantly increases the accuracy at low flow rates. The advantages of the oval gear meter are they offer very high accuracy plus minus 0.25%. They have very high pressure tolerance up to 10 megapascal. They have very high temperature tolerance up to 300 degrees Celsius. They are simple to install and they are not limited to state pipeline requirement. The limitations are, however, presence of bubbles hinder accuracy, not suitable for steam or multiphase fluids, not recommended for low viscosity fluids. The next step is the reciprocating piston meter. The reciprocating piston meter is also known as oscillating piston flow meter. It has a piston with inlet and outlet check valves with the piston moving in a reciprocating manner. The check valves prevent the backflow. As piston retracts from cylinder, fluid is filled in. As piston re-enters, the fluid is forcefully ejected out of the cylinder. It has a very high temperature sustenance capability of 540 degrees Celsius and can handle 100,000 psi g pressure. These are mainly used for heavy chemicals and manufacturing fluids. They offer accuracy of the range of plus minus 0.5 to 1 percent. The advantages of the reciprocating piston flow meter are they offer reasonable accuracy of 0.1 percent. They have very high temperature tolerance, 540 degrees Celsius. They have very high pressure tolerance, 100,000 PSIG, and they are suitable for heavy chemicals. The limitations are they do have moving parts and therefore the chances of wear and tear are high. They are not suitable for steam or multiphase fluids. The viewers can refer to the following links and references for further and detailed study.